Hello Linux fans, Rob here and welcome to Linux Quest and as always thank you very much for watching. So Sparky Linux uh, recently released and I believe recent as yesterday released the availability of the Deepin desktop environment for Sparky Linux. So I wanted to take this opportunity to kind of get into Sparky Linux a little. I know it's very popular and uh, you know has a pretty strong following and a, I think a really good reputation. It's a Debian based distribution uh, like with lots of options for various desktop settings and again Deepin being the latest uh, option there so I thought it would be fun to kind of poke around Sparky a little here and just explore the Deepin desktop environment and that kind of thing. Now if you're new to the Deepin desktop environment if this is the first time you've heard about this I have two other videos. Um, one is on the Deepin OS where I go into more details about settings and things like that with Deepin itself, uh, not only as an OS but uh, part of the desktop environment. And then I also have a video on Manjaro Deepin. So if you wanted to get into more details there, uh, watch those two videos and you'll see things about configuration and various settings. I'm probably not going to get into much of that here. Uh, my purpose again is to not really review Sparky as a distribution, but just kind of to share the Deepin desktop environment, what that's like here. And I'll point out a few things that really stand out in Sparky uh, as an OS, some of the more standout uh, features. So uh, the latest version here, let's just kind of go over to the control panel side of things here and we'll pop into their first order of business. Uh, so this is the latest Deepin desktop environment, which is 15.3. This is Sparky Linux 4.4. Uh, this is a system that is, uh, the system that this is installed on is 4 gigs of RAM, a Core i3 with an SSD drive. So um, my first thought was, you know, instead of choosing one of the lighter desktop environments within Sparky, I kind of expected Sparky to feel uh, a little less Sparky, should we say, with a Deepin desktop environment. I just, I guess I expected it to feel heavy. And in fact, it's the opposite. It doesn't. It feels light, um, you know, and it looks very nice here. I mean, Deepin, you've got to face it, Deepin, Deepin, uh, Deepin desktop environment, if I can spit it out, it's a beautiful, polished desktop environment. I mean, it's just, it's got a very nice, uh, modern look to it and, uh, you know, transitions and hovering and things like that and, you know, the icons and everything, all very nice. And it really works well here. So happy to see that. Uh, I want to go through a few things in the control panel. And again, I'm not going to get into super uh, detailed accounts of every setting here. Uh, but if you're new, this is think of this as your control panel or control manager or control center. Um, and you can activate that by sliding into the corner. Now the corners in the Deepin OS are active. So if you right click, you can go into corner navigation. And from there you can set up various options like control center, all windows, launcher, the desktop, and none. So you would slide over and then you activate by going to that corner. Now you have your main categories here and once you click on a main category, and we're just going to go to personalization. And again, I'm not going to spend the time to go through all of these, but I just want to give you kind of an overview example. Uh, one thing that I was happy to see was that all of the uh, theming and everything seems to work just fine. So we're going to go to deep and dark here. And then I'm going to go into the icons and you've got some, I think, beautiful icons here. You've got flatter and deepen. And I think both of those icon sets are very attractive. So I'm going to change that over to deepen. We'll keep uh, the fonts and everything else as they are. So just again, if you're new to this, uh, once you launch in from the main um, categories, you then have this quick list and that'll give you Lots of settings on practically everything from your internet connection to Bluetooth, sound, uh, so on and so forth, and the ability to shut down, log out, um, and all of those things. Now I want to jump into some of the uh, main applications here of Sparking Linux itself. And uh, before we do that, I'll just go into About Sparky. And one of the things that I did during the install, and let me back up to that. I want to speak to that. The install was very straightforward, very easy. You do two, you have two options for the install. You have their standard installer, and then you have the advanced installer. Uh, I chose the standard installer. And I want to go back and uh, don't hold my feet to the fire on this, but I believe if you go through the advanced installer, you then have an option to install the Deepin Desktop that way. 
Uh, but I did install an update. Uh, there was a fairly large update that took about 15 minutes. Uh, then I installed the Deepin Desktop, came back in, had another update, and I also updated to the latest Sparky kernel, which is 4.8.4. So uh, I want to jump into something else here before I get too far along here uh, and make sure that I point this out to you. And I'll put a link to this page here. So uh, Sparky Linux Deepin, and that would be the page that um, Deepin Desktop, maybe. Live searching on Google. Uh, oh, no wonder I didn't put Sparky Linux in there. So, uh, I'll, again, I'll put a link to this exact page here, and this is basically. Uh, directions on how to install and get um, Aptus set up so that you can install um, not only Deepin but all the other various desktop options or you could go through and do that through terminal through apt here uh, do it that way I chose the previous and I'll put a link to this page here so that you can step through that process very simple straightforward easy and installed without a hitch so uh, again I'll have that link there for you uh, so let me go back over, and I, I talked about Aptus, and that is, I think, a standout feature here. And if you think about this as a control tool for various options with the OS, um, it does a great job and lots of options. I like that it's a tabbed interface. I like that because it helps you to focus. You know, you go to update, and you're just looking at the various options for update only so I like that and I think that helps someone that's new to Linux kind of focus in on what it is they're doing without being overly bombarded with you know a giant list of uh, various icons and things like that so you, under updates you've got you can refresh your package list you have a safe upgrade as well as a complete and total system upgrade under install here is where you could go to install uh, various kernel options and I chose the Sparky kernel option there for the latest. This is also the location where you can install your multimedia codecs. So things like Flash and Ice-T and Java, things like that. MP3 support, DVD support, so on and so forth. Uh, I did install that and, and again everything went uh, as it should have. You can install additional uh, language packages, uh, two other kernel options and I believe the uh, Licrix kernel here is all right, again, don't hold my feet to the fire, but I think that's a kernel f that's focused on like gaming or multimedia or, there, you know, it's tweaked for gaming, I think. Anyway, it's great to see this list of options here and the way this is set up. The other thing that I really appreciate, there wasn't an Office Suite installed, but here's where your option is to install um, a list of Office programs. Uh, you know, you've got Abbey Word, Caligra, of course, LibreOffice, and then my favorite down here, which is uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, WPS Office. Now, you also see MS Office, and I'll just kind of caution you there. Um, that is a menu short, shortcuts of the MS Office online apps. So if you use Office 365, for example, that would put shortcuts down there where you could launch in then automatically to, you know, to Microsoft Office 365. So, but again, very nice to have that there and, and set up the way it's set up. And I was happy to see WPS Office there. So moving on here, if you go to desktop, now this is where you can go in and you'll see here, this is the largest selection of, of desktops that you can um, install that I've ever seen. And uh, as a distro hopper and someone who likes to change things up, it was great to see this. I mean, it's like a kid in a candy store. So, <laughs> you know, you've got XFCE, uh, KDE, uh, LXDE, LXQT, and I was really tempted to go ahead and bounce over to LXQT and um, do a video on that just because that's something I've really wanted to spend some time with. Mate, Gnome, and, or Gnome Shell, and, and then some that I really you know, haven't spent much time with or not that familiar with, such as Awesome or JWM, things like that. So, uh, you know, you'll, you'll recognize some of these right away. And then, of course, uh, Deepin is the newest addition. So, again, largest selection of desktop environments I've ever seen. So, uh, kind of fun there. And then you got Remove, where you can remove non-free packages, remove old kernels, things like that. Uh, fix Broken. That's always good, right? If you've got something broken, so fix broken packages, uh, cleaning, 
remove old dead packages, unnecessary packages, and then uh, you can go in and edit custom repositories and edit the main repository. So Aptis, a very powerful tool, I will call it, and I think kind of a standout tool here for uh, Sparky Linux. Now, when you install the Deepin desktop environment, you get with that some of the Deepin apps, of course. Now, that would not always be the case with other desktop environments because a lot of the other desktop environments, which are very light, don't really have their own built-in image viewer or screenshot tool or things like that. Uh, you also get their file manager, which I believe is a derivative of the GNOME file manager. Uh, you get Deepin Terminal. Uh, so, you know, with the Deepin Desktop, you're going to have two file managers, for example. And so speaking to that, the other file manager, the default file manager, is PCManFM. So we're going to launch into that. Very capable file manager. And let's just take a quick look here at uh, the version. That's PCManFM 1.2.4. Um, again, very capable. Um, and so kind of moving on, the other default applications that you're going to see there... Um, and I'm tr okay, so you still deepen calendar, so that's again part of the deepen uh, suite, if you will. Um, but some of the standard things you're going to see control center, which will launch you right over here to this. So if you're in this menu and you go to control center, it's not going to open up a separate menu, it's still the panel here that slides out. Uh, GDB package installer by default. Uh, I installed Firefox ESR web browser. You get a firewall configuration tool and set up there. Image Magic was installed by default. Uh, you could quickly just go in here and install multimedia codecs. In fact, that's where I installed codecs from. Um, monitor settings. Now, the default browser, again, I installed Firefox. The default browser was NetSurf Web Browser, and I'll just launch into that if you've never seen it. It's really a light, minimal, fast web browser. I've never really spent much time with it, but. Uh, you know, that is the default, so I just wanted to point that out. Uh, you see a separate icon here for the Office Suite installer. Uh, open box configuration, Pulse audio system tray and everything for Pulse audio control was all set up. Uh, root terminal and synaptic package manager was pre-installed, so, uh, and which I figured as much. Uh, system upgrade, and as I said, they were, had a couple system upgrades, and again, no issues, no problems. One was fairly large, and I didn't really focus in to see what all was uh, upgrading there, but it was, again, it was about a 15-minute uh, install process. And then it did suggest a reboot, uh, so not a, not a problem, though. Everything was fine. Task manager, so on and so forth. Uh, archiver, uh, screenshot tool, MUT. I believe that is a text-based email app. I, I don't know anything about that, so I can't really speak intelligently to that. Uh, and I think nitrogen, I keep messing up here. I think nitrogen is the wallpaper, yep, wallpaper manager. So you could go in and scale your wallpapers, that kind of thing. Then we'll launch back over here, system admin. So that's kind of the rundown here. And I just, again, I'm not going to get uh, deep into deepen with this particular video, pun intended. Um, but I did want to give you kind of a, an overview of what it looks like on Sparky for the Sparky Linux fans out there and uh, for the distro hoppers who maybe they appreciate Sparky because you've got all the desktop options that you can quickly install. So this is another one. And it seems to run really, really well, um, you know, in my limited time of use here. So, you know, hopefully this is something that, again, if you're a Sparky fan or maybe you've been thinking about Sparky, uh, you know, here's a new option for you that really adds a whole new level of, you know, interaction and really polishing everything uh, to the overall experience. So have fun with it and thanks for watching. We will check you later.